Hi, my name is James Fryman, and I'm an engineer here at StackStorm. Today what I'd like to show you is a demonstration of how StackStorm can power a cloud-agnostic autoscaling solution. In this demo, we'll be showing the usage of chat ops to enhance team communication and powering this solution. We'll also be showing how StackStorm can be used with sensors and rules in conjunction with workflows to create complex actions chained together to create the demonstration we're going to show today. Finally, we'll show areas where components of the backend can be swapped out to suit your own needs. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Here at StackStorm, we're huge believers of the principle of infrastructure as code. As such, all of the demonstration that you see today is downloadable from our GitHub repository. You can download this at github.com slash stackstorm slash showcase dash autoscaling. There you'll find instructions on how to download, set up, and even play with the demonstration that we're showing today. Before we dive in, I'd like to quickly go over the architecture of Stackstorm itself. The architecture of Stackstorm is built to be modular from the ground up. Each one of our components is built to be scaled horizontally or vertically on its own. Here in this component flow diagram, we can see how Stackstorm integrates and interacts with different portions of external services as well as with components internally. The first component to talk about are Stackstorm sensors. Stackstorm sensors can be either active or passive sensing. In an active sense, they can actively go out to services inside of your organization or external in the cloud, pulling for information on a periodic basis. Likewise, these sensors can be at passive in nature, where information from internal services or external services in the cloud are sent directly to StackStorm. The sensor, in turn, takes the information received from external and internal services and emits a trigger into the system. This trigger is then matched against all of the different rules within the StackStorm system. Rules are matched against criteria. Criteria can be complex in nature, matching against equal expressions, regular expressions, mathematical expressions, and many more. Based on a matched criteria, an action is chosen to be run, and that action can be a single action or a series of actions in a workflow. Once match, StackStorm workers pick up the action and execute it potentially interacting with other internal and external services via action integrations, and then logging all their information to the audit and history log for long-term storage. We'll go over each one of these components throughout the course of this demonstration in more depth. In our specific solution, we'll be leveraging a series of tools that composes our autoscaling solution. In this case, we'll be leveraging New Relic to tell us the health of our systems whether or not our applications are performing properly, or our servers that are hosting our applications are performing properly or not as well. These will be sent via webhook to our system in our sensors, which in turn will emit, emit triggers, web app alert, web app normal, server alert, and server normal. These four triggers will indicate to our system what state our applications are in. As events come in from New Relic, they'll be processed within our rules engine, which we've defined to determine the speed at which an autoscaling solution should expand. These in turn kick off events within Rackspace to create and delete VMs as necessary, to add and remove DNS as necessary, to create and add remove servers to and from load balancers, and manage load balancers themselves. Throughout the entire process, we'll be emitting triggers back through our chat ops platform, in this case, Slack, letting the user know the status of the system. Finally, we have our autoscaling governor. This is a small piece of code that we've written that will help us manage the autoscaling solution as a whole. At each step in workflow, the workflow saves state information about what is happening in the system. The autoscaler governor is responsible for periodically reading the state of the system and making decisions on whether autoscaling groups should be expanded or contracted based on the status of New Relic. I've gone ahead and downloaded the repository we referenced earlier and configured it as per the instructions in the README. I'm going to go ahead and now 
and create our first auto scaling group that we'll use for this demonstration. Here I type in the commands in our chat room to create a new auto scaling group with the name BNA associated with our domain at stackstorm.net. And here I am specifying some options that are specific to this workflow. Specifically, when we start up a new auto scaling group, the number of minimum nodes that is specified are automatically provisioned at runtime. Likewise, the deflate by and expand by settings are used by the auto scale governor and when responding to events from New Relic. These dictate how many nodes are added or removed when we enter a critical state or a recovery state. While that runs, I'm going to go ahead and load up the history. History is auto updating, and as tasks are executed, you should see them update on the lower left hand corner. On the right hand pane of the action history, I can actually scroll down and take a look at the trigger information that was sent in via our chat ops command. I can take a look at the payload and any of the action input associated with this command. Let's let this run for a little bit and take a quick detour and look at the internals of our sensor system, starting with the governor. There are two parts to the component of a sensor. The first of which is the metadata of the sensor itself. This is used to define the information about what triggers are being emitted into the system and the payload that is associated with that trigger. Here we see the actual governor code itself. The governor code is actually one of our internal polling sensors, which wakes up after specific intervals and performs an action. Sensors have a few specific methods that need to be filled out in order to be functional. Otherwise, the code is just Python. Sensor code can be used to interact with any portion of the system, including our key value store, which you see here below. To learn more about sensors, simply head to our documentation website at docs.stackstorm.com and click on Sensors in the left-hand pane. Let's head back to our provisioner and see how we're doing. It looks like we've successfully completed our mission. If we look on the right-hand side, we see that Stackstorm has told us that the load balancer has been created. It's spun up a single node created that node, added it to DNS, provisioned Chef on that server, and let us know that things are going well. After a quick pass through of Rackspace, we can see that all the necessary components have been created successfully. Now, to show off auto scaling, we want to go ahead and simulate a failure within our system. This application that I'm pulling up here is the application we used in order to emit real events from New Relic. I could use this to simulate CPU spikes and or send exceptions to New Relic. We've gone ahead and just replayed the webhook that was sent from New Relic back into our system via chat ops. Now we see that Stackstorm has intercepted that event, emitted a trigger into our system, and gone ahead and kicked off the expansion workflow. This now loads up state from our internal key value store and determines how many nodes need to be added to our system. In turn, we've specified one node needs to be added, so Stackstorm has gone ahead and is creating a brand new node. While Stackstorm is providing some relief to the flailing auto scaling group, let's go ahead and take a quick detour and take a look at some workflows. Stackstorm internally has access to, to run two different types of workflows, the first of which is action chain. Action Chain is our linear, no frills, top to bottom workflow execution. We also integrate with the OpenStack project Mistral. The file you see here is an example of Mistral. Both workflow engines, as well as most of the components in our system, are written in YAML. This is so it's easy to consume and easy to author by most people in your organization. Mistral leverages a separation between the action that is going to take and the workflow step that is going to be executed. In this way, it is easy to go ahead and change out components over time as necessary. This abstraction is powerful. It allows you to maintain the integrity of workflow 
while having flexibility to change the underpinning technologies that are powering your organization. Mistral is built with power. It's designed to have complex execution strategies, such as parallel execution, start shop retry, and even more. Mistral leverages Yakl underneath the hood in order to allow us maximum flexibility within logic conditions. To learn more about Mistral, head to our website at docs.stackstorm.com. In the left-hand pane, click on Workflow, and underneath that, Mistral. Let's check in on our expansion and see how things are going. Looks like things are going well again. Stackstorm has received the event from New Relic, responded in turn by adding some new nodes to our auto balancing solution, and let us know. Here we've seen Stackstorm in action. It has intercepted a webhook from New Relic, acted on that webhook by matching it to a rule, and taking an appropriate action, which in this case was provide additional relief to that auto scaling group and the application in turn that then spun up additional servers in our auto-scaling group, all the while notifying users and admins through chat ops. Each of these steps happen without any interaction on the part of the user. In lieu of waiting for a recovery event, we're gonna go ahead and simulate that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and type that in to our chat ops and watch this event kick off within Stackstorm. Stackstorm then, takes a look at the auto-scaling group, determines what nodes are eligible for deletion, and go ahead and clean them up. I can also continue to drill into the history as we did before, and take a look at each of the actions that are being kicked off as part of this workflow. As Stackstorm processes this workflow, it goes ahead and deletes the node and all the resources associated with that node in reverse order, removes it from the load balancer, deletes DNS entries, and then ultimately deletes the VM itself. Again, all of these actions are being emitted through chat ops so that all team members can be aware of the events that are being taken by the system. Once Stackstorm receives the initial alert from New Relic, it places that application into incident mode. The autoscaler governor then wakes up on a periodic interval, scans that application, and determines whether or not the application is healthy. At which point, once the application is healthy, the autoscaler governor begins slowly ramping down the servers. This tiered ramp down continues until the autoscaler governor has returned the autoscaling group and the application associated with it to a known good state. That only leaves us with one item left, and that's the cleanup of an autoscaler group itself. I'm gonna go ahead and issue the delete command and let Stackstorm go ahead and delete all the resources associated with an auto-scaling group. This includes the nodes that are associated with an auto-scaling group, the DNS entries, and the load balancer that's managing the system. I hope you've enjoyed this brief rundown of how Stackstorm can be used to set up auto-scaling groups. We've shown how chat ups can be used to enhance team communication We've also gone over the sensors and rules and how they're used to facilitate complex workflows like the one we've seen here. Finally, we also talked about how it's possible with the abstraction between workflows and actions to quickly and easily swap out components within your workflows. If you'd like to learn more about this use case, we've written a detailed explanation about the design process and how we build all the components at our website at stackstorm.com blog. In addition, all of the items are easily available for download. You can find them on our website at stackstorm.com community. Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a good day. We look forward to hearing about your experiences with Stackstorm soon. Until next time.